Um, so let's keep going with this. So I'm going to describe um, a technique um, that we use, uh, which is called a mono chronometer. I still have to say that slow to this day. Monochronometer. Okay. Um, so this is a way in which we can take advantage of specular reflection um, as well as diffraction to create light of any wavelength that we want. Okay. Or to select a wavelength of light from an incident white light source. Okay. So if we go back to the basics, so if we shine light on a surface, of course, we will get the specularly reflected light, right? Where the angle of incidence matches the angle of reflection. Um, however, if we put some grooves on this surface, so zooming into this grating right here, they're actually not a smooth surface, but rather they have very regular grooves, okay? typically indicated by this distance D. So this distance D is giving me the center point of this groove to the center point of this groove, okay? Um, then I can create a diffraction pattern, all right? And so I'm not gonna get too crazy detailed into the, the math. Um, the way this works is to get a diffracted wavelength, we have to have whole number integers. So this n times lambda, that means a whole number integer wavelength. So for example, if I want to get um, a wavelength of 500 nanometers, okay, I could use any integer of that 500 nanometers. So it could be 500 nanometers for n is 1 could be a thousand nanometers. It could be 500 meters if we wanted to. That would be a huge grading, right? But as long as it's a whole number integer of the wavelength in question, and particularly uh, the CB plus BD length. And so like I said, I'm not gonna derive this. Um, so this gets into just geometry. It's a geometrical derivation. Um, but the way this works, the C plus B and B plus D distance must be some integer wavelength, right? So I'll try to draw that the best that I can, you know, maybe something like that, right? If I were to unravel that full distance, I need it to be a whole integer wavelength. Um, then whatever that value is, whatever that wavelength is, that is the wavelength of light that will come off given the incident angle I um, and of course the incident angle R. And if you, th if you think about this for a second, okay, the way that this works out, um, we get this pattern where lambda decreases as we go this way. Um, so lambda is, uh, oops, backwards. Lambda is decreasing as we increase that um, angle of reflectance, which I've always found is kind of counterintuitive. You would kind of expect as that angle of reflectance is increasing, you've got a longer path for a longer wavelength, um, but it's all about the integers. It's all about the integer wavelengths, okay? Um, and so what ends up happening for a given constant angle of incidence, okay, so we don't have to change that constant angle of incidence, we will automatically get several different wavelengths that satisfy this equation, okay? And so typically the way that this works now, if I draw my detector up here, I don't want to detect the specularly reflected light. I want to detect the different colors. This grading will pitch and roll to give us those angles that we want, right? So that grating will actually move. So it moves the desired wavelength into the path of the detector, okay? 